Match Sport Podcast brings you the latest stories, news, happenings around the Finnish Football League. Do you want to know anything regarding the Finnish Football League? Then tune in to this podcast because Musa and Sebastian talk extensively about the Finnish Football League. All right, all right. Welcome once again to yet another episode of Match Sport Podcast. We are glad to be here this evening, me and Sebastian. Sebastian, good evening and how is uh, everything over there in... Valkiakoski. Good evening, Musa. Great to be back. In Valkiakoski, everything is just wonderful, you know, enjoying the enjoying the Finnish spring weather at its best. Sunshine plus 16 today, blue skies. It's very rare in Finland. So, you know, I've just been enjoying, as you can see from my look, my red face, my hair is burnt, and my bowl is burnt. So really enjoying it, really enjoying the weather. Wow, wow, that's that's really interesting. If you you you, you call it them a spring weather, already for yeah. me, I think I'm already saying that we are in summer. Here in Finland, because even sometimes some summer weather doesn't feel as good as it feels at the moment. So yeah. for me, I I just decided that okay, the summer has already started. Let's enjoy the weather. It's pretty good weather these days. Also here in Oulu as well, plus eleven, plus twelve degrees, and the sun shining, blue sky. Very very nice to see everybody smiling because obviously the sun is up and everybody's happy. So it's yeah, really yeah. a good time. These yeah, days if, in you, Finland. if you've never lived in Finland, these kind of days are so rare. So you just have to enjoy them, really enjoy them. If you're coming in Finland from abroad, where it's normal, from Africa, for example, most of the time it's sunshine, it's warm, it's nice. You get bored with it. Maybe it's exotic and nice that it's rainy and grey, but I'll ask you, if you're living in Finland for 35 years, <laughs> you don't <laughs> like it anymore. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, and uh, and also actually the football clubs are beginning to play their games outdoor, which is very very interesting. A lot of our friendly games are in all over this weekend, and the boys are just more than happy to be back outside playing football, getting the fresh air, and I, likewise enjoying the good weather over this weekend. So it's really interesting to see football coming outdoor again here in Finland, and it has actually made it possible for some fans even though it's not officially allowed to come into work, but fans can stay from a little bit from afar off, giving themselves a whole lot of space and seeing their yeah, new players that are coming into the football clubs playing and uh, watching them live once again. So it's really a good thing. Over this weekend, the weather has made a lot of things positive and a lot of feelings much better than it has been in the couple of, last couple of months. Yeah, we've been training with the lads outside, outdoors now for the past month or so. And really, it's, it, it, it's how it should be. You know, football is an outdoor sport. It should be played and trained outdoors, preferably in the summertime when it's green and nice and warm and sunshine. Not when it's cold and snowy and that kind of stuff. But yeah. <laughs> in certain <laughs> northern regions, it is what it is. You yeah. get on with it. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. All right. All right. So, Sebastian, today, today we will be looking totally through the... Swami Cup games that have been played so far, the quarterfinals have been played, the semifinals have been played. So we have two teams in the final. So let's start with the quarterfinal games. The four games hey. in the quarterfinal, I will just list the peers and then you will just give us um, your opinions, your thoughts about these peers in the quarterfinal game. So the first quarterfinal game was a Coups against Guinnistan. Yeah, and the second quarterfinal game was FC Honkai against PK thirty five. The third quarterfinal yeah. game was Helsinki EFK if against Oiko, and uh, the fourth quarterfinal game was FC Inter against A SJK. Yeah. So quickly run us through these four pairings. So uh, regarding the end results, no surprises. The yeah. big boys went through. The little teams dropped out. But in the first game, Kups against Gnistan, it was a clear run for Kups, 5-0, it ended. Gnistan had just no... The, the, the quality difference was too much in that game. Kups show why they are the top top end of the Premier League and Gnistan show why they are playing in Ukraine yeah. this season. It, it was clear. Nothing much to say about that game. Yeah. Kups, 5-0, that, uh, that was a destroy. Mm -hmm. The second game was much more closer. FC Honga against PK35 and also PK35 just got promoted from Gakkonen into Ukkonen for, for this season. And they've been playing pre-season really well. And again, it was nil-nil after full time. It went to extra time and even extra time it was nil-nil and it took all the way to penalties for FC Honga to beat PK35. Yeah. 
So that was a nice surprise. The underdogs PK35 extremely well done. Good job, lads. You did the club and and your city proud definitely in that game. Absolutely. And I have to say, Hong Kong were very very lucky to get to survive on the penalties in that one. Third game, Helsing and EFK against Hoyiko. Like we've spoken, Hoyiko should be winning every single year. Nothing to see here. But that and 3-0, they took charge of the game. But after first half, it was 0-0. It was very close. EFK had a game plan. They were following through that game plan. They were defending extremely well, trying to play Hoyiko on the counter-attack. So in the end, it took a soft, debatable penalty for Hoyiko to open their scoring 1-0 around the 50-minute zone. In the second half, and that was that actually broke broke the Elsing and EF course back then. They lost their game plan, they lost their nerves, they took a red card, 2 0, 6 2 0, 3 0 within three minutes of that. You know, it was game over, game over. Unfortunately, the penalty decided that game, but Oyiko went through 3 0 as they should. The final pairing, Inter Esiko, tough game, tough, tough game. It went all yeah. the way to extra time, that one also. And five minutes left of extra time, the second half of extra time, FC Inter managed to score the goal, the winning goal that that took them through to the semi-finals. Yeah. So no surprises with the end results, but a couple of tight, tight, tight situations there, which could have gone either way. But right now, Hoyiko got the luck in the penalty and... FC Honka managed to win, managed to survive the penalties also against PK35. Yeah. And uh, looking at what uh, PK35 have already done in these Somi Cup games, uh, the wonderful <laughs> runs that they had in the Somi Cup games, are we beginning to put them in the top four, top three in this Ukonen, in the Ukonen co this coming season? Or what do you think? Or do well, you think it's going to be a different ball game entirely? It will be, much will depend on the boys' attitude. If they can keep the same kind of attitude against Ukkonen teams that they've played and shown against Veikkaus Liga teams, then I'm sure they have a chance to fight for top six even in Ukkonen this season. They've done it remarkably well, remarkably well. And in the end, it comes down to the attitude. If they start to, you know, think they're too good for Ukkonen, it could bite them in the bite them in the heel pretty fast. But it's a matter of attitude, in my opinion. You know, if they keep that concentration level, that focus level, that intensity, attitude, defending as a team, attacking as a team, they should definitely have no trouble maintaining their place in Ukkonen, at least for this season. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, well, at least I'm pretty sure they are going to maintain their place also in the Ukkonen this season. But I wouldn't have placed them in the top four, top three, or even top six before the run-ins of the Swami Cup games. But looking at what they've done during these um, Swami Cup games, I'm beginning to think they could be one of those teams that will be up there in the regular season, when the regular season eventually starts. But uh, just like you said, if they don't feel too big, if they put on the same attitude, just like they put on in the Swami Cup during the league proper itself, then they probably be ending up in the top three, top four position. But anyway, we keep our finger crossed for them and let's see what they have to offer us when the season starts. So, sure. now let's move to the semi-final games of the Swami Cup. Yeah. Cubes, Honka, the first semi-final game, and uh, Oyiko Inter, the second semi-final game. Yeah, now, like I was saying, the, the clear favourites, of course, Oyiko and Cubes to go through yeah. to the final from these pairings. And again, uh, regarding the end results, no actual surprises. Oops, went through. Hoyiko went through to the final. Congratulations to both teams. It'll be an interesting final to see. I think they'll be playing the final at the Olympic Stadium, the new yes. Olympic Stadium in Finland. It'll be exactly. it'll be with no spectators, I think, still. Oh, I'm not sure about uh, if it's going to be with without or with spectators. I'm not sure. Yeah, yet. Be, I, think, I think it will be the first official football game at the new Olympic Stadium. Okay, wow, that's interesting. I don't, I have no idea about that, but I know it's going to be played in the Olympic so Stadium. Be, it would be yeah. nice anyway. But anyway, Coops, two early goals in the first half, 2 0. And then at the end of the second half, Honka managed to, I think, or beginning of the second half, uh, get one goal back. So it ended 2 1 for Coops, if I'm not wrong with my statistics here. And the Coops did the job, played professionally, yeah. did the job, defended well. No problems for Coops. I see a regular day in the office regarding that game. Yeah. And um, the second pairing, Hoyiko, FC Inter, 4-0. That was very, that was very, 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 very that was strange. not That was not expected, actually. No, I thought Inter had, generally Inter had played a good, solid defending game. 
so far up in the Suomi Cup, mm-hmm. conceding zero goals, conceding maybe one goal, this kind of stuff. Yeah. And now suddenly, Poyiko just blew them wide open. Yeah. So it was oh. uncharacteristic for FC Inter. Maybe were they nervous? Maybe the COVID effect or what other reasons? I don't know. But oh, Poyiko yeah. just ran away with that, that that result in that game. And it made, made it look easy. Made it look exactly. easy. Exactly. Well, it's a, uh, it was a shocking result for me also because I was expecting a very tight game. But yeah. already Oyuko was up 2-0 in the first half and then two more goals in the second half. And uh, that was the end of And Oyuko leading already in the first half two goals to nil. I bet there was nothing to fight for anymore during the second half because they were very much superior in that game anyway. Yeah. And but if but if Inter would have ended the first half with a goalless draw on that game, probably it would have been a different ball game in the second half. But oh, you could already up in two zero first half. Obviously, there wasn't anything yeah. for Inter to do yeah. anymore. Yeah, and again, how you got a penalty? The third goal was a penalty. Yeah, in that round, so they were again a bit a bit lucky with the penalty. Maybe I don't know, but it seems they'd be getting quite many penalties awarded for <laughs> <laughs> Probably their strikers are just too intelligent, and the defenders that are against them are not just wise enough to know how yeah. to get them closed down or what. But anyway, yeah, that's the result. 4-0 to Oyiko against Inter, 2-1 to Coops against FC Onka. What are your thoughts about the final game? Oyiko Coops. It's, it's an interesting game. It's just, again, it's lovely that they're playing in the Olympic Stadium, but it's a shame that, it, again, it happens to be located in Helsinki. That means yeah. that the Oyiko game is actually the home team. They don't yeah. have to travel anywhere. They can sleep at home, just turn up in the morning, you know, go to the stadium. Most of the fans will be from Helsinki area. They have a huge support there from the local boys. And again, Kuopio players, they have to travel the day before, most probably, because it's a long way from Kuopio to Helsinki. Come down, try to sleep at the hotels, that kind of stuff. Wake up again, go and play the game. They're professionals, they're used to that. But again, it's in, in these kind of stages in the final, every little detail is important, yeah. in my opinion. And you get in, in in Europe sometimes the fans might come, you know, during the night and set up fireworks at, outside the team hotel, you know, just to wake up the players that just happened, you know, in the Champions yeah. League. Exactly. Right now, you know, it's a good example. You <laughs> yeah. know, just don't let the players rest, disturb their sleep, disturb their rest, you know, as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Every one hour, set up fireworks outside the hotel and, 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 and you know, just try and get into the players' minds and try and get every single advantage to the home team. So, mm-hmm. so it's a shame in that sense that Hoyiko are the home team. Basically, the home team, even if Joe, it's a, we're playing at a so-called neutral venue, the Olympic Stadium. But or you will get a slight advantage just by being from Helsinki in that game. Yeah, that's but true. the game should be in itself. I'm looking for a tight game. I'm looking for a good proper football game. There, Coops definitely won't be giving up nothing to Hoyiko. They'll be wanting to win the Finnish Cup, wanting to stake their claim, take the Europa League qualifying place as soon as possible. They have qualified for Europe after that. The winner of the Suomi Cup qualifies for Europa League, I think third qualifying round. So they've already had one leg in the Europe European Games for next season. And that will be always a big thing for Finnish clubs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I believe Coops will be turning turning up for that game with <laughs> with a whole lot of enthusiasm, enthusiasms and with a whole lot of beliefs. And with a whole lot of faith, they've had a good run in. And they have a very good team as well this season. So... So there is nothing stopping them from uh, putting a very good show up against Oyiko in no. this final game. And uh, just like we are saying about the ground, which will, which will automatically put Oyiko in a position whereby they will be the home team because it's in Helsinki. I think probably in the nearest future, Finnish Football Federation or Palolito should put this kind of a games to a new track ground. Maybe they should move it down to a place like Olu. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man from Olu. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and why not? So both teams have to tr- make pretty much the same hours of traveling down to Olu and then the Olu fans can enjoy good football also. And the fans also will still travel with their teams anyway down yeah. to Olu to watch the game as well. So And it will be a neutral ground, total neutral ground for both teams in that sense. But for... That's just our own suggestion. Oh, that's just my own opinion here. Hopefully, Palolito could look into that in the nearest future and make such things happen. Anyway, but yeah, that's uh, about it for the Swami Cup games. That's uh, about the results and the final games actually will be played on the 8th of May. That will be on the 8th of next month. 
So I it's on the same date as our season starts with the under twenties, the eighth of May. All right, all right, good, good one, good one. It's a good day to play the Finnish Cup final. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but hopefully they will they will allow some couple of at least some numbers of fans to go into the stadium to watch. It will be sad to have an Olympic size stadium hosting the final of the Swami Cup game without fan at all. That wouldn't be so nice. But hopefully that would be possible that fans could go in. At least a few numbers would yeah. make a big difference. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope yeah, so. Let's hope so. All right, all right. So moving on to our next um, phase of this podcast today, it's uh, talking about uh, interesting players that we believe, as you, uh, our listeners already know from the last episode, I and Sebastian, we picked uh, five players each from the Vekos Liga that we believe they are players to watch out for. And today, we will be picking five players each from Ukunen, which is the Division One. Likewise, to at least the players that we believe that will be interesting players to look out for or watch out for in this uh, new season, in this 2021 Ukunen season. So, Sebastian, do you want to go first or should I go first? No, Musa, please, you're the host. You go forward <laughs> and take your first turn. All right, all right. So... My first player for this evening will be Topi Keskinen. Topi Keskinen is an 18-year-old football player who plays for Mikkel and Palo Elias. Why am I picking Topi, Topi Keskinen? I'm picking him because I, he has a, a lot of attributes that I believe is much, like, much more than what his age is at the moment. Topi Keskinen is very fast. Topi Keskinen is very strong. He's very intelligent with the way he makes his passes and makes his runs. And he's also comfortable on the ball as well. So, and, and the funniest thing about Topi Keskinen was that last season, Topi Keskinen was actually in the Ukrainian team with Mikel and Palo Eliad as well. Yeah. He played 19 games. Simultaneously, he was also playing for the under 19, which is called the uh, SM Sariat. Yeah. Something like that in Finland. And he actually yeah. played eight games in the Sariat and played 19 games in Ukone. Yeah. And mind you, that simply tells me that if he was doing this last year, he was doing it at the age of 17. Now he's 18 years. He will be playing probably most of the games with um, MP, with the MP team in Ukonen this season. So it's really fascinating for me to see how much it will be, how much you would have developed, how much his game would have improved in this coming season. And that's why I'm picking him as my number one player to look out for. It's going to be very interesting to see what's going to turn out of him at the age of 18 after this season. And I'm also looking forward to see where he's going to be come next season because I believe it should have gone, it should be away from Ukonen definitely after this season and uh, looking forward to what he has to offer in this season and where he will be when come next season so my first pick Topi Keskinen Mikel Impalo Eliad yeah it's always wonderful you know I personally love clubs that give responsibility to young young players you are brave enough to give responsibility and playing time to young players like 17 year old top prospects they're not afraid to put them in the men's league in Ukraine level, give them the playing time, you know, even if it's last 20 minutes, last 15 minutes, give the boy the crucial experience to in the men's league, in the men's game, to develop, you know, and again and again and again. And if he got 17 games, what did he say in Ukraine last season? It was pretty unbelievable for a 17-year-old lad. On top of that, he played in his own series, the Assam, Assam Sari, which is the top level of under-17s football in Finland or under-20s, the same league that we're playing with my team right now. Exactly. So, um, it's, it's a tough level, very, very tough level, even yeah. for his own age group. Yeah. So I, I personally love clubs who are brave enough and smart enough to give give chances to their own young talents, talented players, because it will definitely, they will reap the rewards in the long run. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, you picked a young player, I'll pick an old player. We go. Oh, right, good. Dr. <laughs> Kirby again. <laughs> okay, my first player, an interesting, coming back to Finland from Italy, Mr. Kalle Multanen. From VPS. Now, Kalle Multanen has been three times crowned Ykkönen goal-scoring champion. In each single season, then he played in FC Hakka. In the first season, in 2014, he scored 30 goals in Ykkönen, which is pretty much 
Second season, 2015, he managed 19 goals and again top scorer. And in 2017, he managed 14 goals and again he was crowned top scorer of Ukkanen. After that, a couple of quieter, he moved away from Hakka. And for the past two seasons, he's been playing in Italy. In Italian, I think fifth division, fourth division, fifth division, this kind of level. And during COVID, now the training was stopped in Italy. I understand even the salaries were stopped. So I didn't get paid. He couldn't train. He was stuck in Italy with no money, with no training, no football club. And he decided to come back to Finland during the COVID phase. And he joined Beas with Karjalainen. Wow. Uh, for example, he's a... It'll be very interesting to see. Can Kalla repeat the magic of the previous seasons in Ukkonen? If he can still, if he's not old, too old, if he's not too slow, if he's still motivated... He can definitely still score the goals for Verbeas that could most probably even get them challenging for the top positions in Ukkonen this season. But they will definitely need Kalle Multanen on top of his game. Now, the only weakness that Kalle Multanen most probably has is that he forces, it is said that he forces the team to play a one-sided attacking game. Basically, it's a long ball into the box and he's tall, he's a powerful header, he wins that long ball and he scores the goal. Okay. So it's very one-dimensional, the attacking. That's the only... Bad thing I've heard from Kalle Muldan and that the, his playing style forces the team to play the long ball into the box. And yeah. that is it, basically. That's the attacking variation right there. Yeah. So if if the opposing teams have got strong centre-backs who can also play strong in the air, defend the long ball into the box, then it could be a tough season for Kalle again. Wow. But I'm pretty sure he'll still be somewhere around the double figures for Ukkonen coming this season, at the end mm-hmm. of the season. He's always been there or thereabouts, so... Mr. Kalle Multanen coming back from Italy to Ukkonen, trying to showcase his skills. Let's see if he can do four times scoring champion in Ukkonen this season. Interesting to see. Wow, that would, that would be very interesting to see. Me, meanwhile, I think um, the, the successful strikers in Finnish football are strikers that are tall and can win balls in the air comfortably. Those have really been the most successful strikers in Finland. If you, are not, if you don't have a good height, in Finnish football, and you are a striker, you might not be with, you might not be having so many goals during the season. For some reason, it looks like the defenders are quite good on the ground, and you just have to make your way up in the air. Uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed in the Finnish football, uh, if you if you have a, a strong natural talent for headers, you win win the aerial challenges. You are definitely going to score goals in Finland because somehow it seems like the Finnish players, in my opinion, they just don't know how to hit the ball. They're not strong in the air. They're not brave in the air. They're afraid to make the aerial challenges. They're not brave enough. They, whatever the reasons are, or maybe they're not trained enough during the academy phases, you know, to play with their heads. Now, of course, there's some sort of negative information about heading. It's been related to um, different sort of mental mental diseases and mental stuff like Parkinson's disease and memory loss and this kind of stuff. So they're trying to even cut back the heading in football now. So let's see how it goes. But definitely, if you're a strong header in Finnish football, and you can come to Finland, possess the aerial proofs and strong heading ability, you'll definitely be a strong strong advantage in the Finnish leagues. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. Yeah, all right, all right. So moving on to my second pick, I'll be picking a player that I've known for five, six years in Finland and by name Karam Adhud. Karam Adhud is a player who plays with Musa Salama now. And why am I picking Karam Adhud? It's not because he's the youngest, he's a 25-year-old player. But he is a player that has been in Kakunen for many years. And in while he was in Kakunen, even though everybody talks about his efficiency, his... Um, style of play, his aggressiveness, his attitude, positive attitude to games, and is a midfield box-to-box midfield player. Even though people talk about how effective he is always, that he should not be an Kakkonen player, he should be an Ukkonen player, or even be a Vekos Liga player, but he never had the chance to play higher than the Kakkonen teams for five, four to five seasons. But eventually now, he made the step upwards for the first time in his um, playing career in Finland, moving to Musan Salama, playing the Ukraine this season. So it will be very interesting for me to see how Karam will be doing in the Ukraine this season. And that's why he's my number two pick. So Karam Hardwood, a midfielder, box to box, high, high, highly rated midfielder in the Kakkonen while he was there. 
and I'm looking forward to see what is going to be given to the Ukone in this coming season. So Karam Hardwood, Musa and Salama, that will be my second pick. Okay, you started with Musa and Salama, I will continue with Musa and Salama players. Okay. And two reasons basically why I picked the next player from Musa. First one is, of course, I love I loved the gifts that they gave you, the Musa cap. That you wore in the previous in the, one of the previous episodes, they were really that was really a nice gesture from Musa. I was personally very, 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 very taken. Even though they didn't give me a cap, they gave you. Not me a cap. I, I, I most probably need a cap also <laughs> because of the sun. But, but yeah, that was just you know respect respect towards Musa. You know, I picked oh, yeah, one of their exactly. players, and again, it, it, this player could be a dark horse in Ukraine. Nobody really knows. He's a Japanese attacker named Mitsuro Tanida from Musa. In his first 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 game for Musa, they win 9-0 against Tobe, and he scored a hat trick immediately. After that, unfortunately, he got injured, and he's been <laughs> he's been coming back from the injury after that. But Mitsuro Tanida, a Japanese attacker, he played in Japan in universities, I think, before coming to Finland. But, you know, Japanese players, they're wonderful. They have a spark of magic. They're so quick and agile and always fighting for the team till the very end. And just look at Atom, for example, in Hoi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful player. So let's see if Mitsuro Tani yeah, can show some of the same magic that Atom has shown Hoi in joining Musa. And let's see, he could definitely be, be one to watch for if he gets his scoring boots on and, and adapts well to the Finnish weather and with the weather and league in Ukraine. So, Mr. Mitsuru Tanida, attacking Japanese player from Musan Salama. Wow, interesting, interesting. I love the Japanese player also. There, there was one here with uh, ACO a couple of seasons ago. He uh, was a, a, left, a left back and very fast, very professional. And I think the only disadvantage with the Japanese player is their height. Yeah. Their height doesn't really fit into Finnish football, but anything away from the height, I think their their attitude is always very positive, and uh, they are always very they are very good, also very good players from that part of the world. In fact, I think for an attacking player, for an attacker, the small small size could be even be an advantage because you go to the penalty box, you're a small player, you easily get tackled over. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. It's a penalty all the time. <laughs> That's actually true. So it could be, you know, even working his advantage in this case. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. All right. So moving on to my third uh, player. Tylavid is a UK player now playing for FF Yaru. Mm -hmm. There is a particular reason why I picked Tylavid. Tylavid is a 23-year-old player. And he actually won... The under 21 Premier League Championship with Manchester United under 23 in 2014 2015 and in 2015 2016. That's just a couple of years um, behind the baby, probably five, four, five years away. So it's quite interesting to see a player who has played at that level of football and looking at his statistics, looking at his data from uh, transfer market. Mm -hmm. From after that particular season when he won the Premier League, he has moved from clubs to clubs from the third tier to the fifth tier to the fourth tier in the UK. And finally, now he's finding himself in FF Yaro here in Finland in Ukraine. It will be really interesting to see what kind of a player this guy is. <laughs> he's uh, looking at a couple of his um, videos and all of that. He's a uh, tall, dark, hefty looking left right back right defender so it will definitely be a figure for a lot of attackers to actually conquer in the Ukraine this season no doubt about that but considering his experiences considering his years of football considering the kind of football that he has already played in the past years I'm really looking forward to see what he has to offer to Ukraine this year and that is why he's coming as my third pick so Tyler Tyler Reed FF Yaro my third pick for our discussion okay, interesting, this evening. Interesting player. Definitely be looking out for him also. Yeah. I love I love UK players. <laughs> <laughs> I totally do, particularly one that I've had a pretty good um age grade football like Tyler Reed. Definitely will be interesting to look out for him in this coming season. Definitely, definitely. Good pick. Good pick. Okay, my third player, Mr. Samson Ebuka Obioha. 
from Mikkelin Pallolia, just made the transfer for this season from Gemi City FC, who played in Kakkonen last season. And during his time, he's, he's a central midfielder, defensive midfielder, central midfielder, attacking midfielder, general midfield, you know, a box-to-box player. Powerful, powerful, excellent, excellent on the ball, excellent vision, excellent creativity, very good finishing. He ended up the joint second top scorer in Kakkonen with 10 goals in 16 games only from midfield position. Wow. And that is that is a that is a good achievement for a midfield player, definitely. He he helped with his goals for Kemi City to retain their place in Kakkonen during last season. And this season he got the chance to make the step immediately up to Ukkonen. And it'll be very interesting to see, see his level. I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain he will manage in Ukkonen. He'll do very well in Ukkonen. And most probably he will only be spending in Ukkonen this season. Then some Bekos Liga team will pick him up. Or even he might sign abroad somewhere else, take the next step abroad from Finland. He's really, I'm really looking forward to this play, this player playing in Ukkonen this season. Yeah, well, Mr. Samson a... Ebuka Ebioha, Mikkeli yeah. Pallolia. That's a very interesting pick. I'm looking forward to him as well this season. I followed him quite a lot also over the previous season while he was in Kakkonen. And just like you said, he had a very wonderful season. He had a very wonderful season with um, FC Kemi in the Kakkonen. And and uh, one thing that is very common with um, a whole lot of foreign players and a whole lot of African players is also at this level of the football, when two good seasons are coming in a row, they tend to lose focus, they tend to lose beliefs, they tend to lose intensity in their games, and this always affects how they move from there. So I really hope Samson will not get carried away because I'm 100% sure he will definitely be having another good season with Mikel and Palolia. So I hope he will not be carried away with the success of this season, but rather I'll just keep putting more and more of the works so that, just like you said, Bekos Liga might be knocking on his, knocking on his door for the next season asking for his hand in paper for next season or even moving abroad to probably some other countries and have a good football again. So I'm looking forward to him and I'll be watching him closely also in this very coming season. A very good pick, something as well. Very, very good pick. All right. So my fourth pick for this evening is a player I call uh, Jonathan Muzinga. That Sounds uh, the name sounds very very African, of course, and because he is an African from DR Congo, and also is likewise a Finnish player. Yeah, yeah, he's likewise a Finnish player, and he plays for PK thirty five. Jonathan Muzinga was the highest goal scorer for PK thirty five last season when they were Kakkonen, before they, and they got promoted to Ukkonen, just like we talked about them playing against FC Honka in the quarterfinal game. Yeah, but he yeah. wasn't on the team list in that game anyway. But the thing is, he was the top goal scorer in the Kakkonen last season. And while he was in Kakkonen, like, he was just 18 years old. At the moment, he's 18. He will be 19 on, the, on August 28. So it's very interesting to see how he's going to manage, actually, in the Ukkonen when the season really starts. He has done really good for himself in Kakkonen. Can he actually transit those performances or can he move those performances that he had in Kakkonen down to Ukkonen? Just like we have always been talking about Ukkonen, Kakkonen, these two teams, the differences are very, very huge. So it will be very interesting for me to see how he's going to manage in this Ukkonen season, how he's going to manage with the team, if he's going to be making the whole goals. And like you mentioned earlier regarding the striker that you picked for your first player, we were talking about strikers that are tall and good in the air, make a lot of goals in Finland. Yep. That's one of, that, those are one of the attributes of Jonathan Mozenga. He's tall, he's good in the air, good yep. physique. So yep. he's a threat to defence lines also. But it could be a threat to the defence line in Kakkonen. Will it be a threat to defence line in Ukkonen? That is something to actually look out for. And that is why I'm picking Jonathan Mozenga as my fourth player. So, Jonathan Muzinga, PK35, my fourth player for our discussion this evening. Yeah, very, very interesting pick. Very interesting pick. Like you said, you know, if he's tall, if he's powerful in the air, he most definitely will have the chances to score goals, even in Ukkonen, I believe so. Yeah. And with young players, it's always about, you know, their mental state also. You know, if they get carried away, they start thinking they're better than they actually are. 
he could have a long season ahead of him. But if he stays humble, works hard, manages to play without fear or anxiety because he's playing at a higher level than he's ever played before, I think. So if he can manage those expectations, work hard, keep working hard, keep following his managers, his managers, you know, game plans, doing what he's supposed to do on the pitch, I'm pretty certain also he will he will have a great career ahead of him as a player. Exactly. Even in abroad, not just in Finland, but abroad yeah. also. Abroad also, yeah. Wow. Okay, my fourth pick. Uh, this was a pick, it was an easy pick, in fact. He was one of the first players that came into my mind. You knew getting off to his wonderful interview with us <laughs> during the <laughs> previous previous episode, Mr. Wilterlund Inalien from Yippo. And for those of you who've been following our podcast, you 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 saw the episode with Will when he was here as our guest, a wonderful player, wonderful character. You know, I really liked him. Then mm -hmm. you know, he, he's my fourth pick. Simple choice, really. You know, it'll be very interesting to see him play Nukan in this season. He will score the goals also, most probably. I, I will definitely hope and rooting for him. In Yaro, he did in nine seven goals in 19 games when they were trying to get promoted to Vekas Liga. And he assisted three goals, three street goals in the process. And in his previous season in Kakkon and when he played, he did 20 goals in 21 games. So definitely he has got the talent to score those goals. But it just again, that shows a good difference between the levels of Ukkonen and Kakkonen. He managed to score 20 goals in Kakkonen. The next season he scored only seven goals in Ukkonen in the same amount of games, basically. Yeah. And again, now he switches teams, a new team, new formation, new manager, new ideas. How will it suit him? Hopefully well. And hopefully I'll see him, you know, in, hit the double figures this season in Ukkonen, improve on the seven goals he scored last season and improve double figures this season. Maybe 10 goals will be a good target for him. And it will also help the Yippo to maintain its place in Ukkonen. Exactly, exactly. Well. Wow. Wow, that's a very interesting pick. I'm looking forward to him also. Just like I said, very interesting player. And uh, we had we had him on the podcast a couple of uh, episodes ago. And uh, yes, and actually he was with uh, he was with Yipo when they came to play against Esiolu in a friendly game. And he actually scored against Esiolu. And Yipo actually won 3-0 against Esiolu. Good boy. <laughs> and, Good boy. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> Well done, Will. Well done. <laughs> oh, oh, you know that was a that that was a shocker. Anyway, that was a shocker, and and uh, after after that game, ACLU have really tried to tighten up a little bit more with within their squad. Try, within their squad, sorry, try to bring in uh, more quality players. Try to strengthen the squad a little bit stronger because you shouldn't just go down three zero to a newly promoted Ukrainian team. Just like it's that. It's a bit so, embarrassing, isn't it? Quite, it's very embarrassing. Club. <laughs> 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 very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Very uh, embarrassing. But on the good, on the good side about it is that it will actually score. So, something to take home for me in that game. Something to take yeah, home for me. Definitely. In that game. So, definitely. so we will we'll be looking well, forward to you. Well done. Yeah, well, well, done, done, done. Will. well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Right. So, my fifth pick for this evening will be Verti Annine. Verti Aninen is a young 18-year-old boy also who plays for Rovaniemi Palo Seura. So there is a lot of interesting thing about Verti Aninen. Verti Aninen is not the strongest kind of a player. He's not the tallest. He's not a, he, he doesn't even have a, the best physique as a football player. But he is very intelligent and very, very skillful. And while Verity was 17 years old, that was last season, he was playing for Rovaniemi Palace or Rovaniemi Football Academy in the Kakkonen League. And Verity actually played 13 games out of the possible 17 games. The four that he didn't play, he missed due to Armstrong, if I remember correctly. And um, in the Swami Cup, in the Kakkonen Swami Cup of the last season as well, he played a couple of games. I think he played about three games. But anyway, by the end of last season, Verte Aninen actually, at the age of 17, he had a 1,216 minutes, playing minutes to his name in Kakkonen. And he so, became, yeah, and he became one of the most interesting players in the midfield in the Kakkonen for Rovaniemi Football Academy then. So coming into the new season that the that Rovaniemi Palosera will be playing in Ukonen, 
Verity actually has been part of the four Swami Cup games that they have played. And he has played a total of 298 minutes in these four games. And that is very, very impressive. So this is why I'm picking him. It seems the coach have seen something special in this 18-year-old boy who is not the strongest, who is not even the biggest, but have something just some speciality about his football. And that is why yeah. I'm also looking closely to Verti Aninen this season as my number five player to watch out for in the Ukonen this season. So Verti Aninen, Rovaniemi Paloseora, my number fifth pick for the season. Interesting, interesting. What can I say? If you're good enough, you're old enough, basically. It doesn't even mean you have to be the most powerful or physically ready as a big Cristiano Ronaldo type, you know, muscle machine. If you've yeah. got the brains, if you've got the brains, you've got the vision, you've got the movements, you've got the passing quality, you can definitely intense that kind of magical spark within your play that will open up defenses, create the passing lines, do that kind of do what you talked about, give the magic to the team, give something yeah. special, something different from the midfield position, definitely. And it seems that sounds like this boy has it. Yeah, and it again, is. it's wonderful to see young, young, talented players getting the opportunity to play in the men's exactly. leagues. Okay. Hats off! Hats off to the clubs playing these youngsters. Well done, well done, and well done to Betty also. Let's hope he has a wonderful season. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. Okay. My fifth and final pick from EF Gnistan, an interesting, interesting, interesting foreign player. I think it's Brazilian, Mr. Douglas K. Okay. He, he's a he's a right-footed, left-footed. He can finish with either foot. Extremely dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Season after season, he's been one of his teams, no matter what team he's played in, he's been one of their top goal scorers in that team. He, wow. This guy scores goals. He will be dangerous. You put give this guy the ball within the box, near the box, most probably right foot, left foot, header, it doesn't matter. He will put the ball in the net if you give him any space whatsoever. So, Mr. Douglas K from EF Nistan. And the interesting fact about Douglas is that the Gnistan's current coach, head coach, Mr. Ricard Duarte, in fact, he coached Douglas K a couple of years ago in Finland during a, pre during a previous stint when he was, I think he was assisting or doing something else with Verpeas in 2018. He played okay. in Verpeas in 32 games, he scored six goals. And Ricardo Duarte was working with him in that club then. And now Ricardo Duarte is head coach of Afghanistan and he recruited this player as his striker immediately. When he was available, he took him. So oh, it will awesome. be very, 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 very interesting player to see what happened. After, after visiting Barca, Verpeas, he went to Nicaragua, Premier League in Nicaragua, and he scored 15 goals in 17 games. Oh, and, wow. and I have to say, in Premier League in Nicaragua, it's a tough... I don't know much about the league, but I can imagine... It's pretty tough, and the atmosphere is pretty high, also. And and to score fifteen goals in seventeen games in that kind of situation is pretty, pretty, pretty special. And it'll be definitely interesting to see how many scores goals he manages to score with Knista and Nukun in this season. Wow! wow. Basically, if, if he gets if he gets the proper proper feeding within the box, the proper deliveries, that he will his goals most probably will help Knista for sure mid table position this season. Yeah! Wow. Interesting, Mister Mister Douglas K from EF Nistan, my fifth and final pick. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. And uh, looking at uh, what Guinnistan has done so far this season, considering that they they actually played in the relegation zone last season, but now keeping their place in the Ukonen and now actually with what they have done with the amount of acquisition that they've acquired this year. Actually, if I, if um, if my information is totally right, Guinnistan are the team having the probably the most valuable player in Ukonen this season. Another Brazilian player, to be precise, I can't remember his name at the moment. But the point is, they've actually strengthened their squad a lot, a lot this season, and and it's not a surprising thing for me seeing them all the way to the quarterfinal in the Swami Cup before they lost out to Coops. And when you look at the attitude they had after they no, lost they out to Cubes, well until what they did extremely well until until the, that point until the Coops game in the finish yeah, cup. They did extremely exactly. well, extremely, extremely well. well. And even the Coops then the five zero. I don't know what happened. Were they nervous? Maybe were they maybe too nervous? Was it maybe getting tired legs at that point, or 
what is the combination of these things? Who knows? But until that point, they did extremely well in Istanbul. Exactly. And uh, even the attitude after they are lost, you will see that there is a unity, there is cooperation, there is belief. They came together at the middle of the field and uh, the report after the game was like uh, they were just saying, that, OK, even though we've lost out in this manner, we've done so well for ourselves this season in the Swami Cup. And they are, put, they are taking the same spirit, the same mentality, the same beliefs into the league proper. So there will definitely be a team to look out for. They are definitely not, I want to believe, don't let me say definitely, I want to believe they are a team that wouldn't be in the relegation zone this season for no I reason. They will not be there. They will not be there this season. They will be in the top six. I, told them, I want to believe that yeah. by the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah, after after Ricardo Duarte took charge of Finistan, he changed a lot of things within the team. Of course, last season he had to use the same players of the previous manager who built the team, and he managed. I think they were two points away from relegation in the end, so they just barely managed it. But he did the job. He managed it, and now he's had the whole long finish preseason time to get his own players in the team, get them to play the football he wants them to play according to his playing style, according to his philosophies, his mythologies, this kind of stuff. And it's, it's working. What can I say? It is working. He's an excellent coach. They're doing an excellent job, he and his staff, yeah. with the team. The players are dedicated. They're motivated. They believe in what the coaches are selling them. Exactly. And that's always, that will be an extremely difficult team to beat then. With that kind of motivation and that kind of attitude and team spirit within the club. It's wonderful to see. And definitely, I agree, Tunistan won't be anywhere near the relegation places this season in Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. True. All right, all right, Sebastian, it's been an interesting uh, discussion over this podcast episode this evening. I've really enjoyed myself talking about my five players that I've picked. So if I'm just going to go through my five players to watch out for for the season quickly, uh, well, my, the first player is uh, the first player is Topi Keskinen. Yeah. Topi Keskinen for Mikel Impalo Leat. My second player is Karam Adhud from Musa Salama. My third player is Tyler Reed from FF Yaro. My fourth player is Jonathan Muzinga from PK35. And my fifth player is Verti Annine from Rovanemi Palo Seura Ropes. Excellent, excellent. My top five players to watch out for in Ukkanen this season. Number one, Kalle Multanen from Vaasan Palloseura. Number two, Mitsuro Tanida from Musan Salama. Number three, Samson Ebuka Obioha from Mikkelin Palloliat. Number four, Wilterlund Inalien from Jippo. He, like, he loves that name. He loves that name. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the fifth and final, Mr. Douglas Cave from EF Gnistan. That's my top five players to watch out for this season. Follow these players, they will definitely set Ukraine on fire, in my opinion. Yeah, wow. Wow, in interesting, interesting picks, interesting picks. Let's see how all these players, let's see how they will be performing. Let's see how far the season will go for them. But I believe that they will all be having a very good season. They will all definitely be having a very good season. They have something. They have something within them. That's why we picked them. And we want to believe that whatever it is will actually shine for them this season. Definitely. So, yeah, finger first, finger first. So, on this note, we will be rounding up for our today's podcast. We hope you, our listeners, have enjoyed what we have to offer today. We've talked about the Swami Cup games, how far they have been played, and then the pairing, which is going to be between the final game of the Swami Cup game, which is going to be between Oiko against Kuopion Paloseura Coops. And yeah. uh, also, we've given out our ten total 10 players that will believe that there are players to watch out for in the Ukrainian team. So, Sebastian, on a final note, what um, do you have to give to our listeners? Nothing. I just wish for, you know, excellent, excellent. Stay safe, stay healthy, and tune in for the next episode for this podcast again. We've been going through some interesting subjects, and great to have you here again. All the best from me. It's good night. Stay safe. All, all right. So, for me as well, have a wonderful evening, and stay safe. Bye. See you next time. This podcast is brought to you by Matt Sports, a football management company.